Hey there everyone, welcome to episode 31 of Wizard Weekly, where we bring you news and humor from around the spiral. This week there really isn't much of either, but perhaps a chance that the Blossom Pixie would brighten up your week. On the official Wizard 101 Facebook, they've decided to do their own Wizard Weekly thing, and apparently are giving away one pet, new or old, every week. To participate, just click the Attend button on the event page for your chance to win a code for this blossoming buddy, and make sure to check back every week for a chance at a new companion. Harvest Hannah appeared in the news recently talking about Zafaria, but she may have mentioned that she'll soon be back in the spiral as well with a cornucopia of goodies to celebrate the autumn season, so make sure to keep your eye out for her in the shopping district. Also, the new Tribute to the Troops item has come out today, the Shield of Valor. As you go to log on to Wizard 101 today, you'll see a button that you can click to redeem this beautiful wall piece. Everything seems pretty quiet in the Power Pip too, though congratulations to Aaron Legendblade who took home first in the level 30 through 49 Halloween Havoc tourney. The rest of the tournaments have yet to come to a conclusion, so keep an eye on the roster. This week in Better Homes and Gardens, we'll be visiting the tranquil cottage of Kina. The life of a death wizard can be very stressful, so Kina has made the ultimate in relaxation getaways. You can sit back in her small sound garden to listen to rain pitter-patter against her enchanted gong, or just relax to the sound of the wind playing through the wind chimes she's hidden up in her blossoming cherry tree. There's a small shrine to the Muda where you can meditate to try and achieve clarity and peace of mind, and another shrine behind her house where the spirits she wields in battle can rest between adventures. Her room is tucked away in what she calls her hobbit hole, snuggled down in the strong yet gentle embrace of the earth, where she's lulled to sleep by the sound of running water. If she doesn't decide to stargaze all night on the small balcony between waterfalls. Inside the small cottage is a welcoming foyer, which she's decorated before the introduction of the bazaar, farming everything you see here for herself and arranging it for maximum feng shui efficiency. Up the stairs is her small reading nook, which takes her back to her Marlebonian roots with a warm sofa, a crackling fire, plenty to read, and her latest attempts at mastering the fire school evident on the table. Kina's house may not have a lot of glitches, or a lot of items, period, but its simplicity and its story combined with her attention to detail really makes it some place you'd like to come back to. I was really able to focus my inner eye at Kina's place, and maybe Wolf Titan Tamer should head there for a visit because he wrote into Letters from the Spiral to ask, do you think they will ever change the view of your wizard because of the height of the mounts like the Great Cornoceros? I do agree with you that something needs to be done about the camera angles on the large mounts. While many of the new larger mounts are absolutely gorgeous and very masterfully done, they're kind of hard to enjoy. While I love high flying as much as the next person, gliding around with the majority of my screen occupied by bird butt is just not the experience I was looking for. And the same goes for the rhino rump, though it's not nearly as bad, and I can understand that one being large because it's a two passenger mount. I'm not the only wizard experiencing these perception problems either because I have yet to go to a PvP match or a function where the wizards who refuse to dismount these things don't turn them sideways so they can see over the top. I'm not a game developer, so I don't have a very good idea of how much work they'd have to put into this, but simply jockeying the camera a foot or two above the wizard and looking down would have been a nice touch. They could probably and would probably do something about the camera views if enough people sent in helpful, positive feedback about it, not complaints, just something more like a suggestion. Even if it doesn't seem like it at times, they are listening, and if something is established as a problem, they'll more than likely get to it, or at least take a look at it when they have the time to. We're downsizing from mounts to pets with Nathaniel Icecrafter's question, do you think the new armor piercing stat will be available as a pet talent? 
For those of you who don't know, Armor Piercing is a new talent that is going to be coming with the release of Zofaria. It's only on the test realm now, but it'll come to live, you know, with that stuff, and it basically negates a certain percentage of resist from shields and gear to help address the over-resistance problem we're looking at in PvP right now. If you read the introduction to Armor Piercing all the way through on the official Wizard 101 website, they say it'll be available as a pet talent as well as armor and spells, which means it's, it's more than likely going to be a static stat like resist and power up, instead of a chance stat like critical and block. King's Isle is going to have to be very careful which pets they decide to put this on though, as it's going to have somewhat of an impact on low level PvP where novice duelists can't really stack enough resist to effectively counter act that pet that contributes a high level of piercing. I do think it is a good answer to some of the problems faced in high level PvP though, and it'll be really interesting to see just how this stat plays out, how it changes the game. Do you think King's Isle should take away a cooldown when you go to an unavailable or full area, writes Victoria Dawn Bright. I do believe it's rather silly to have to wait a minute to change realms again when we couldn't in the first place. Uh, the countdown is there to keep wizards from over farming areas too enthusiastically, but what I don't understand is why it goes into effect when we ch can't change realms or areas to begin with. The only thing I can think of is that the countdown starts when you attempt to teleport instead of having successfully teleported, and King's Isle is just let it go at that because it doesn't really seem to represent a problem, or if it does, it doesn't bother people enough to write in about it, so they probably won't change it until someone is spoken out. Good question. That's all for this week's Wizard Weekly. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week. Happy weekend, everyone! Oh my god, really Humphrey? Oh my, no, Pepper, Pepper, come back. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god, that is raunchy.